So good afternoon, everyone. We're really happy that you're here joining us for this candidate forum. My name is Hector Lafarga, Jr. Uh, I'm the executive director of Mother's Club Family Learning Center, but I'm serving also as the chair of the Pasadena Latina Coalition for this year as well. So we all extend a warm welcome to each of you. So to get right to it, it's my pleasure to introduce our MC for this afternoon. John Cadiz Clemac is an award-winning general assignment reporter at NBC4 Southern California. He is lauded for his versatility and breaking news journalism skills. John has covered some of the highest profile stories in Southern California. He was the only local reporter on the Christopher Dorner manhunt to investigate Dorner's Las Vegas residence and was in San Bernardino County when the Dorner standoff came to a peak. John has been honored with a number of industry awards, including being part of the team that won the LA Emmy Award for NBC4's special, LA Riots, 20 years later. John holds a Bachelor of Science degree in journalism from Ohio University. The son of a Polish-American father and Cuban refugee mother, he is bilingual, having spoken Spanish since his childhood. He is also a member of the Radio Television Digital News Association and the National Association of Hispanic Journalists. Our MC for this afternoon, John Cadiz Clement. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's good. Well, good afternoon. Thank you all of you for uh, having me here on behalf of NBC4 Southern California. It's always good to come and uh, enjoy these afternoons here in the community and be part of the Pasadena Latino Coalition's Candidates Forum today. We want to begin the program by acknowledging those who have made this afternoon possible. The first gracias must go, of course, to the members of the Pasadena Latino Coalition, the PLC, as it is informally known was formed in 2011 and was convened by Alex Nogales of the National Hispanic Media Coalition. So give them a round of applause. The PLC, made up of community members who share a common desire to seek social justice and fair representation for the Latino community. Their goal is to work as a coalition of nonprofit organizations serving the Latino community to inform our constituents about the resources available to them, their rights to be heard in the public policy debate, and advocate on their behalf for policy change in education, jobs, and housing. The member organizations are Actors Actores Youth Academy, Adelante Youth Alliance, Community Health Alliance of Pasadena, CHAP Care, Community Organization of Pasadena for Advancement in Education, Flint Ridge Center, Latino Heritage, Mother's Club Family Learning Center, National Hispanic Media Coalition, Office for Creative Connections, All Saints Church, Pasadena Mexican American History Association, and Planned Parenthood Pasadena and the San Gabriel Valley. So a round of applause for all of them too. We also want to say gracias to the community members who are sh made sure that all the details for today's forum were covered and to thank All Saints Office of Creative Connections for their donation of water and snacks. We can say muchas gracias to them. Right? <laughs> applause, we'll give them a round of applause. Uh, we want to thank the Pasadena Senior Center for hosting us today, one of the many ways this independent nonprofit organization gives back to the community here. They're going to be celebrating their 55th anniversary this year, and you found some copies of their uh, newsletter there on your chair when you arrived. So happy 55th to the Pasadena Senior Center. We want to acknowledge the crew from the Pasadena Media who are covering this event, thanks to Executive Director Carrie Stokestad and Production Supervisor Bobby Ferguson. Thanks so much for being here. Now we want to cover some of the uh, ground rules for the forum today. Members of the community, including some of the teens uh, that were here today, submitted several questions. There were more questions than could be asked in the time allotted, so they were curated by members of the Pasino La P Pasadena Latino Coalition and serve as a basis for the questions that are going to be asked of all the candidates. All segments are going to be timed. Our timekeeper is right here. She's going to let them know when they have 30 seconds remaining and when the time is up. So candidates need to be aware of that. So keep an eye on Sandra right there. Also want to point out that an invitation was sent out to all candidates uh, in this election. Some of them either had prior commitments or some of them chose not to be here today. So we want to start with council members running uncontested. District 2, uh, excuse me, District 6, Steve Madison, he was supposed to be here. Uh, he, he apologizes and sends his regrets. He's stuck on the tarmac back east. But we do have with us uh, Council Member Margaret McAustin here. So thank you for being here from District 2. Demonstrates a strong commitment when candidates, of course, who are uncontested still want to come out and attend these forums. 
So, Ms. McAustin, we got three minutes to start to share something about yourself, why you're running for office, and why you're here today. Thank you. Um, first of all, I would like to say thank you to the Pasadena Latino Coalition for inviting me. As John stated, this is the only forum to which I have been invited. And I appreciate the chance to be here, if only to be the warm up act for the, for the, bigger, the bigger fish to follow. Um, my name is Margaret McAustin. I have been on the city council for eight, almost eight years. I ran for city council in 2007 uh, against two opponents. Uh, I won in the runoff. At, uh, I won the first election, and then we had a runoff election, and I won that election as well. In my second term, I was unopposed, and this uh, will be my third term on the city council. I do have a history of involvement in Pasadena. I've lived in Pasadena for about 40 years. And I have served on the Planning Commission. I've served on the Library Commission. I served on the Citizens Task, uh, uh, the uh, Charter Reform Task Force, uh, where we got the, where we voted in the citywide elected mayor. So I have participated, I've been involved in the formation of three neighborhood associations and served as president of two neighborhood associations. So I feel I have a strong commitment to Pasadena that I've demonstrated over the years through continuing to be, continuing to be involved. In my role on the city council, I serve as the city council representative to the Arroyo Verdugo uh, uh, subregion, which is a transportation uh, multi-city uh, COG, uh, Council of Government, so to speak. I am the City Council representative on the Board of Foothill Transit. Uh, I am the chair of the Municipal Services Committee, and I also serve on the Finance Committee. Great, thank you very much. So we, we've got those questions that were all put together. You'll have 90 seconds to answer each of these questions. We're gonna start with number one. What are the demographics of District 2? What are some of the most frequent concerns expressed by your constituents? District 2 is largely, uh, I would say, we have, a, we have a small Latino population, but it is largely um, white. We have a very small African American component. We also have uh, a fair number of Asian Americans in District 2. In District I'm sorry, the second part of the question. Some of the most frequent concerns expressed by the constituents in your district. The most frequent concerns I hear from my constituents are relate to quality of life. And by that I mean code enforcement issues, sidewalk issues, you know, uplifted sidewalk issues, I guess would be a better way to put it, um, traffic, transportation, and public safety. So in my district, which is largely residential, in District 2, I only have a small portion of my district, which is commercial. The bulk of it is single family and multifamily homes. So public safety and, again, quality of life issues are uppermost in my constituents' minds. Thanks to the Affordable Care Act, many will be able to get health care for the first time. However, many will not be able to get insurance plans due to their immigration status. Describe how you would balance community concerns, state and federal law, staff considerations, and your personal values and beliefs to determine how to vote on the issue. Regarding the Affordable Care Act and whether or not uh, everybody would be able to get specific insurance plans, particularly those in the immigrant community. Look, everybody deserves insurance. It doesn't matter what your status is. We're all human beings, we're all on this earth together, together, and access to health care should be a basic right that everyone is entitled to. It's not only for the rich, uh, or it's not only for those in well-populated areas, or only for those with a birth, birth certificate that says they were born in the United States. But it is a challenge because government is a big entity and we have to find ways to be compassionate, yet 
enforce our laws. Un, uh, uninsured uh, people are a tremendous burden on government and on society. I think we all know that. That's why it's so important that everyone have access to insurance because it's, it saves money in the long run. We all know if you don't go to the doctor now but you spend all your medical money going to the emergency room, it's a tremendous drain on the system. So in my view, we have to do everything we can to ensure as many people as possible have access to health care and using our own, uh, we do have our own public health department in Pasadena, which serves largely the underserved population. The third question is diversity and inclusion are topics that are often discussed here in Pasadena. There are those who feel the civic leaders involved in the discussion are usually black or white, and the topics discussed have been primarily on the needs of the black community. What are some existing ways that you can point out where Latinos have been meaningfully included in discussions of this sort? I think the, uh, from the point of view of a city council member, the issue I've seen the Latino community most in involved in when it comes to justice and diversity and representation has been related to public safety. We've seen a much more, I've seen a much greater participation by the Latino community in issues affecting the police, affecting public safety, and how we're addressing the problems in the community because so much of the violence that we do see has been uh, black on brown. And I think it's a, a real issue for the Latino community and so naturally that's where I've seen more participation. Current discussions in our city include gentrification, a tale of two cities and rent control. Those are points of philosophical discussion for some people. For many who live in Pasadena, it's about the difference between their continuing to live in the city and moving to another city. So the question is, what steps should be taken to balance the needs of long-term working class residents in the city and those who bring a greater affluence to the local economy? So this is the easy one. <laughs> um, look, I, we have experienced a lot of gentrification in Pasadena, and, and some people say that that's a, ba a bad thing, that gentrification is bad. It's not all bad. It's not all bad when neighborhoods grow and uplift, uplift themselves and become better, just as it is for the city. But the ch biggest challenge we have today is housing, affordable housing. For those who live here, for those who have lived here for a long time and cannot find affordable housing, and for new, new residents who want to move into the city and can't afford the rents in Pasadena. So there's a couple of, a couple of um, ways to address the problem. The most important way, because we see this in city after city after city, but the most important thing we can do is find an ongoing source of funding to provide for affordable housing. In my mind, that's the number one thing we can do to help the um, housing crunch in Pasadena, which is what I think causes, you know, as you say, causes people to move out, and then we don't have a growing, young, youthful um, uh, residency. You and your, and your currently elected council members will be joined by a new mayor and by a new council member from District 1 this spring. What are some philosophies and skills that they will need in order to work effectively with those currently on the council? Patience. <laughs> um, ability to be able to sit for long periods of time. Um, you know what, it's, I think, I recall from when I came on the city council, there's really no preparation for it. Although membership on city commissions is a, is a very good preparation experience, it's not the only experience. The ability to listen to everybody's voice and to not um, jump to a conclusion to be patient and to allow every voice to be heard, 
the form of government we have with the strong city manager, weak mayor, does not mean that, that the mayor, new or old, should come in and very strongly dominate the city and the city discussion. The city is run by the city manager, and the role of mayor and council members are to set policy. So I do think it's important that we remember what it is we're supposed to do and not sort of get down in the weeds because one of the reasons Pasadena is a successful city for the most part is the form of government that we have where the city council members and mayor are part-time and not highly compensated. In addition to increased law enforcement at our city's parks, what would you suggest to reduce the significant and troubling recent spike in violence at these important public recreation areas? Could you repeat the question? Sure, in addition to increased law enforcement at our city's parks, what would you suggest to reduce the significant and troubling recent spike in violence at these important public recreation areas? Well, in terms of, although the violence isn't just in the parks, the most important thing we can do in terms of addressing violence in the parks is to be in the parks and to use the parks and take back those parks as our own. If, if undesirables look, are looking around for a place to go and they see a park where there's a Tai Chi class and a Mommies and Me class and children playing on swings and people picnicking, they're not going to come into that park because that park is used and owned by those residents. So in my view, more programming, more activities, more use of the park tells people that these are our parks and they're not a place for violence, they're a place for recreation. We have two more. Pasadena is a city that is rich in its architecture, arts, culture, and diversity of heritage. We see evidence of black and white ties throughout the city, but we do not see the same for Latinos. What can you do, or what have you set in place so that this is remedied? Pasadena is a city that is rich in its architecture, arts, culture, and diversity of heritage. We see evidence of black and white ties throughout the city, but we do not see the same for Latinos. What can you do, or what have you set in place so that this is remedied? I guess I, d I don't see the lack of the Latino um, voice in the community. I actually see it pretty clearly that, there, that the Latino community is represented, is par participating uh, at every level, and I don't see that there has not been a, um, that there is a void there. Maybe it's because of the uh, Latino coalition that the Latino community has you know, raise their profile, which I do think is a good thing. We all know that one of the one of the complaints people have about the Latino community is that they don't vote. So, as always, um, casting your ballot is one of the the best ways to make yourself recognized in the community and have a stronger voice. Last question: If elected, will you commit to serving the full term? <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, so we want to give you one, one more minute to uh, any, any final thoughts that you want to include. Thank you. Um, thank you to those of you who came out to this forum. Um, election, elections are really tough on the candidates. They're, it's not tough on me because, as you can see, I'm sitting up here all by myself. But it's people like you that keep people like me accountable. And so on a sunny Sunday afternoon, to see as many people here as are here is really heartwarming because it's because of people like you that we do what we do. And in Pasadena, we have a unique ability because of the districting and because of our strong community um, attention to politics, we're close to our con constituents. I answer every email I get from a constituent. They can call me at home. And that, again, I think is so important to keep Pasadena a strong and vibrant community. Thank you. Council Member Margaret McAustin from District 2, thank you so much for being here.